right, so here's a free response question. Let's see what we can get to here. So Lydia and Bob were searching the internet to find information on air travel in the United States. They found data on the number of commercial aircraft in the United States during the years 1990 to 1998. The dates were recorded as years since 1990. Thus, the year 1990 was recorded as year zero. They fit a least squares regression line to the data, the graph of the residuals, and part of the computer output for the regression are given below. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Let's kind of unpack this. We can tell we're dealing with a regression problem because it, it has the word regression in it. So there must have been two numerical variables. And right out the gate, I can see one of them, right? Because we always label our x-axis with our x variable. So we've got years since 1990. There is one of my variables. All right, so we've got our x variable is years since 1990. There's also got to be a y variable floating around here. Now, this is a residual plot, so I don't have my y-axis labeled with my y variable, but let's go on the hunt for it through this problem and see if we can find it. Right? And I hear, it, I hear it with this number of commercial aircraft, so the number of planes in the United States. There's my other numerical variable. So let me just take note here that we had two numerical variables. which is a key distinguisher in chapter 12, bivariate data sets. All right, I see the mini tab. So I wanna make sure I, I know the coefficient column, right? So this one here, I know this is gonna be my y-intercept. I know this number here is gonna be my slope. I also know this is gonna be my x variable, right? So from that mini tab, I can read a whole bunch of stuff and that's good because they didn't give me the raw data in this problem. Right? I wasn't given anything to plug into L1 and L2, so I've got to rely on this mini tab and this residual plot. All right, so let's take a look at part A. All right, so part A is asking, is the line an appropriate model to use for this data? What information tells you this? All right, so if we think back to example 13, that's where we started talking about, is this line appropriate? So I'm just gonna sketch this here and then I'll write my answer up in a, in a bit. Not sketch it, but just scratch work. So I wanna think about the things that we, we would talk about, the three factors that go into this decision. So you wanna think about your scatter plot, you wanna think about R, and you wanna think about your residual plot. All right, and if you, if you don't remember what, what I'm talking about, let me go find that page. Give me just a moment to track that down and, and we'll take a look at this, right? So in example 13, we talked about determining if a model was a good fit for that data. Again, we wanna ask, does the scatter plot look linear? Is R close to one or negative one? And does our residual plot show a pattern, right? Or does it look like a mess? So let's, let's figure this out. All right. So for this problem, they did not give me the raw data, so I do not know anything about the scatter plot. Okay. As such, they also, you can see the R squared is missing from this mini tab output. If I had R squared, I could get to R, but I, I don't have R squared. So I'd still have to leave a question mark there. Right? But I do have the residual plot, and the residual plot is the strongest factor. And look at this residual plot, it's a mess. There's nothing going on in here in terms of a pattern. So I would put a happy face here. And since the residual plot is the most important factor, it's that red light, green light, it's actually telling me stop. All right, is the line an appropriate model to use for these data? Yes. What information tells us this? There's no pattern in the residual plot. All right, so even though I wasn't given a scatter plot and even though I wasn't given R, I was given the most important inf piece of information. I was given that scatter plot. So let me go ahead and write that up. And so my answer for A, I'm gonna move this up here so we have some room, all right? So my answer for part A would be the word yes. Yes, it is appropriate, all right? This model is appropriate.
because there was no pattern in the residual plot. Okay, great. All right, so there, there's our first part done. The next, the next question says, what is the value of the slope? Okay, and then interpret the slope in the context of this situation. All right, so in terms of the slope, we can find our slope on the mini tab. All right, so if I wanna find my slope value on the mini tab, it's always under this coefficient column and it's the second number down there. So I see the slope is 233.517. All right, so let me scooch this back up just so we have enough room to begin or to keep on writing all of these things. So I would say here that my slope, oops, let me write it with the word slope. Is 233.517. Again, for me personally, I like to make it a unit ratio and think about the units and it's always Y units over X units. All right, and our Y units were aircraft, right? So number of aircraft. And our X units were years. And once I have that, then I just flip back to that template that I gave you back in example 10, okay? And we're gonna swap everything out for our problem. So instead of writing for every one unit increase in X, the predicted average increase or decrease in Y's blank units. Let's try this. So for every one year increase in years since 1990, the predicted average increase in the number of commercial aircraft is 233.517 aircraft, or you could write planes, yeah? So basically for every year past 1990, the predicted average increase in the number of commercial aircraft is 233.517 planes. Okay, I'm gonna write that sentence down. We got that one. So the next question is going to ask us what is our y-intercept and can we interpret it? So if we go back to that mini tab, or at least that partial mini tab, and we look for our y-intercept, we can see our y-intercept is 2939.93. So let me go ahead and write that down for part C at this point, and we'll see if we can't interpret that one. So C, our y-intercept would be zero, and then 29, 39.93. All right, and if I think about the units, right, we know this is years, and this is planes. All right, so let's go to our y-intercept interpretation and see if we can figure this out. So this says, when X is zero units, the predicted Y value is blank units. All right, when years since 1990 is zero years, or another way of just saying that is in 1990, the predicted number of commercial aircraft was 2939.93 planes. All right, so I, I'm predicting in, in 1990, we had about 2,900 almost 2940 planes, but 2939.93 planes. And yes, keep the decimal. I know it's not a possible value of our variable, but that's the numerical answer. All right, so let's write that out. In 1990, 
the predicted number of commercial aircraft was 2939.93 planes. Okay, great. So I'm cruising along at this point. I've got my slope, I've got my y-intercept. It didn't ask it of me, but I just wanna put this out up here so that we, we have this in case we get asked for it, right? If I wanted to write up my, my LSRL, right, I would say number of aircraft. I can predict it, so I'll put the hat over it. Um, my y-intercept was 2939.93 plus what, 233.517 times years. All right, so that's my LSRL. If they ask me to use it, I, I can, no problem there. But it's always y equals a plus bx, all right? Um, one thing I didn't mention that I, I think is worth repeating, um, in both of our interpretations, I want you to see we had something about years since 1990, and we had planes, right? We had the units for each of the x and the y variable. These both had the word predicted in it because we're basing it off of our LSRL, but slope always has the word average because it's an average rate of change. Okay, and here we go. Look, what is the predicted number of commercial aircraft flying in 1992? All right, so I have to be a little bit careful. All right, so let me, let me I mean, careful with the 1992. Let me rewrite that LSRL, right? So I have here, I can predict the number of aircraft with the equation 2939.93 plus 233.517 times years. Okay, and why I was saying I wanna be a little bit careful is you don't wanna just plug in 1992 here. All right, that's not how our units were set up. If we go back to the original wording of the problem, it was set up as years since 1990. So if you're talking about 1992, right, that should be recorded as year two because it was two years since 1990. So what I'm trying to say here, and let me scooch this almost all the way up so we can see it. I don't wanna plug in the number 1992. I wanna plug in the number two. All right, so let me just put this off to the side here. In 1992, it has been two years since 1990. Okay, I'll even put it in a little box and float it, okay? So what I'm trying to say is I wanna do 2939.93 plus 233.517 times two. And let me see what my calculator is gonna give me with that. So I'll clear all this out. We'll go 2939.93 plus 233.517 times two. So I predict that there's gonna be about 3,406.964 planes. So pretty close to 3407. But we're gonna keep that decimal, because again, that's the numerical answer, right? We know there's always these little residuals, there's these little errors, no problem there. All right, so let's do this. So we have 3406.964 planes. Okay, so we're getting there. All right, so that's how many I predict in 1992. But if we look at part E, it's not asking for predicted anymore. It's just saying hey, how many were actually there? What is the actual number of commercial aircraft flying in 1992? So part E, whenever you want the actual number, right, they're asking you to incorporate the residual. Because if we remember, our residual is our actual Y value minus our predicted Y value. All right. And I, I just wrote actual and predicted because I wanna now put in the context for this question. So this is the actual 
number of aircraft minus the predicted number of aircraft. Okay, so this is the number that they're asking us to find in Part E, right? Because Part E directly says, what is the actual number of aircraft? So I want this number, right? But in Part D, we just found this number. All right, so here's the idea. If I want this number and I have this number, it would be awesome if I knew the residual, because if I have these two numbers, then I can set up a linear equation and solve for that one. But I do have this residual. Let's go to our residual plot. All right, we haven't used this yet. At least we haven't used it recently. We used it in part A, but let's go back to it. What was the residual in 1992? Well, in 1992, that was the year two. That residual is pretty darn close to 40, if we look at that height there. All right, so let's rework part E and solve this one out, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna say that 40 is equal to the actual number of aircraft minus this predicted number of aircraft of 3406.964. All right, so I'm gonna substitute 40 in for this value or for this variable. I don't know this one, this is one I'm still looking for. And then I knew the predicted number of aircraft from part E. All right, and if that's messing with you, think of this as we're solving this equation. We now want to look at 40 equaling x minus 3406.964. If you were going back to your math days, what would you do to both sides of this equation to get x all by itself? You would add 3406.964 to both sides. Right, this would cancel here, you would get x, let me give myself some space, you would get x over here, and you would get 3446.964. All right, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So I'm just gonna add 3406.964 to each side of this equation. It's gonna cancel here. So I'm gonna get the actual number of aircraft on the right side of the equation in 3406, no, 3446 when I add it, excuse me, because 3406 plus 40 is 3446. All right, so if I clean this up a little bit, I would have that the actual number of aircraft is 3446.964 planes, that would be the units. But since this is the actual number, you can't have .964 planes floating around, or flying around, excuse me. I don't even know what that would be, like a plane with a couple of windows missing. So we will round in this case. So the actual number would be 3447 planes. So the only time we're rounding is when we have to get the actual y values, because those do need to be whole numbers. All right, when we predict, we might have a little bit of an error, but, but when we have actual, no, that's got to be whole numbers. All right, so when I catch you on the next example, it'll be our last example, we're going to be looking at outliers and influential observations.